Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to uh, lecture 6 of uh, module 4 of this course Game Theory and Economics. Uh, before we start this lecture, let me take you through what we have been discussing in the last lecture. So, what we have been discussing uh, is uh, various aspects of uh, mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. Uh, we have first defined mixed strategy Nash equilibrium and uh, looked at certain properties of it. For example, that in the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, in a proper mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, the actions which have positive probability attached to them will all have same expected payoff and that expected payoff is the expected payoff to the player uh, from that uh, mixed strategy profile. And uh, we have also and the, the actions for which the probability attached is 0, the ex expected payoff should be at most the expected payoff to the actions where positive probability is attached. This important property of mixed strategy Nash equilibrium helps us to find the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium in different games. Even if there are uh, more than one action, <coughs> more than two actions of a player or even if there are more than two players in a game. Uh, and uh, Subsequently, we have been discussing also the modification that is needed uh, of the concept dominance. The fact that an action can be dominated by another action, it can be strict dominance or weak dominance. That we have discussed in case of pure strategy where uh, no randomization is allowed. But if randomization is allowed, if a player can play mixed strategies, then we have seen that. Uh, that definition needs to be modified. Uh, but qualitatively the game uh, does not, the, the results do not change much in the sense that uh, even if we have mixed strategies, then uh, it is seen that the action which is strictly dominated by another mixed strategy, then uh, this action which is dominated will never be played in the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. <coughs> and even a mixed strategy which assigns positive probability to an action which is strictly dominated will not be played in a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. And talking about uh, mixed strategy Nash equilibrium and mix uh, and dominance, strict dominance and weak dominance, uh, we have seen that if we have uh, strict dominance by not both the players in a two player game not both the players but one player then we can do what is known as iterated elimination of strictly dominated actions. to take you through uh, the example that we have given in the last lecture. This was the example. Now, you can see that M strictly dominates R. So, if R is dominated, strictly dominated, R is not going to be played. Uh, 
uh, in the sense that there is no circumstance under which 2 will play R because whether one chooses U or D, it is always better to play M than R. Now, if R uh, goes out of consideration, then look player 1 now has a strict dominance, uh, U strictly dominates D. This is a sequential thing, initially U was not strictly dominating D, but since R has gone out of consideration, then this column does not matter anymore and if this column does not matter anymore, then U is strictly dominating D. And so, now D is going out, out of consideration because 1 is never going to play D. And if that is the case, then 1 is left with U and basically 2 has to choose whether he will choose L or M. Uh, and obviously, 2 is greater than 1, so M is chosen by 2 and U is chosen by 1 and 1, 2 is the payoff to the players. So, this is known as iterated elimination of strictly dominated actions. Uh, now, this may seem a, a very simple way, but it is not that simple as it seems. The logic is a little bit complicated. When we are eliminating these actions, what is needed is that uh, both the players are rational. They want a more higher payoff than a lower payoff, but it is not sufficient that I know I am rational. What is also known, what is also required for this uh, elimination, this process of elimination is that I know that the other player is also rational and vice versa. The other player must be knowing that I am rational. So, rationality is a common knowledge and only then we can go on eliminating the actions in a sequential manner which is strictly dominated. So, uh, it works in the following way. <coughs> uh, firstly, player 1 knows that player 2 is rational. Since player 2 is rational, that is why R is not going to be played. If R is not going to be played, then 1 thinks that uh, U is better than D. Now, the fact that 1 thinks U is better than D the fact that U is ration, 1 is rational is known to 2 and that is why since 2 knows that 1 is rational and that is why he that is 1 uh, has figured out that 2 is not going to play R and that is why 1 is not going to play D, that is why 1 is going to play U and that uh, leaves 2 with the choice between L and M and 2 chooses M. So, this rationality does not apply to a particular person on an individual basis only. Uh, it must be a common knowledge that I, and in, I am an, is in, an, as an individual is rational that has to be known to the other players also and then only we can uh, go on eliminating this strictly dominated actions. <coughs> now, this was the case of strict dominance. Uh, if we eliminate the actions which are not strictly dominated, but suppose weakly dominated, uh, then can we get uh, profiles, action profiles, uh, which are you know here in this case for example, 1, 2 is a Nash equilibrium which we have got uh, by eliminating strictly dominated actions. So, does it apply in case of weakly dominated actions also? Uh, so, do we get uh, by eliminating weakly dominated actions, do we get uh, profiles which are Nash equilibria and which are the only Nash equilibria in the sense that in this game <coughs> 1, 2 is a Nash that is U and M, uh, this action profile is a Nash equilibrium and no other action profile here is a Nash equilibrium, right? No other action profile is a Nash equilibrium. So, does, does this same feature uh, apply to K 
case where weakly dominated actions are eliminated and we shall see that the same feature does not apply. There we shall see that uh, the, uh, the action profiles that we shall be left with uh, in case of uh, weakly dominated actions uh, are not necessarily the only Nash equilibria, there could be other Nash equilibria also. Take the case here, this game. So, this is a game where player 1 has 2, 3 actions and player 2 has 2 actions. Now, let us compare between T and M, player two, 1 has 2 actions, 3 actions. If we take only these 2 actions T and M, uh, then it is obvious that uh, T is weakly dominated. by m. Uh, so, T is not going to be played, right? T is weakly dominated. And uh, if T is not going to be played, then I am left with only m. And if m is the action that one is going to take, If M is the action, M and B are the actions that one is going to take, then basically 2 has to consider between uh, L and R and it is obvious that L is weakly dominated by R. Okay. Uh, so, L goes out of the question because 1 is 1 and 1 here, uh, if M is played by 1, uh, if 2 plays L he gets 1, 2 plays R he gets 1, if 1 plays B if uh, and uh, 2 plays L he gets 0, if 2 plays R he gets 1. So, <coughs> R is weakly dominating L. So, uh, L goes out of the question. So, this goes out of the question. So, we are left with these two action profiles and uh, you can see that both of them are Nash equilibrium. So, we are left with M R and B R. So, these are uh, the action profiles that we are left with and we can check that both of them are Nash equilibrium. Now, here we started with <coughs> comparing between T and M and eliminating T which was weakly dominated by M. But if we started by comparing M and B, then what happens? Uh, here, if we compare between M and B, we can immediately see that B is weakly dominated by M. So, B is weakly dominated by M. So, B goes out of question uh, and if T and M are the actions to be played by player 1, then again L uh, player 2 will compare between L and R and he will observe that R is weakly dominated by L. So, in a sequential manner, 
R is weakly dominated by L. So, this R now goes out of the question and we are left with these two profiles. So, it depends you see it both this T L and M L are Nash equilibria. But the point is that they are not the Nash equilibria which we got before which were M R and B R. So, the profiles that we are left with uh, the, the, that set varies that set varies depending on the order of elimination. If we had started with eliminating T then we are getting these two profiles, but if we had started with eliminating B then we are getting these two profiles. So, in case of weakly dominated actions and elimination of iterative elimination of weakly dominated actions, uh, the profiles that we shall be left with uh, the identity of those profiles uh, depends crucially on the order of elimination. But this was not the case in case of elimination of strictly dominated actions, there it does not matter which order you take you shall be uh, reaching an unique set of action profiles. Now, <clears throat> one reason why we are discussing uh, this weak domination and strict domination with uh, such uh, emphasis is also the fact that in case of Nash equilibrium, remember the idea of Nash equilibrium. it is a steady state. Right. So, suppose we are talking about pure strategy Nash equilibrium, A star is an action profile uh, such that given the other players are taking A not I star, taking A I star by player I is optimal. So, that was the idea of Nash equilibrium, but a crucial question that has not been, un been answered is that how have we reached this A star. Uh, it is true that if A star is reached, if this particular action profile is reached and if this action profile is played uh, for a number of times, then by looking at the experience, uh, looking at the previous history of the play of this game, uh, people who are taking the action at a particular play of the game will take A i star or A j star whatever the actions at the equilibrium action profiles at the at the action uh, equilibrium action profile because he knows that other players will be taking their expected actions. But the question that remains is how do we got uh, how did we get into this A star. Uh, there must be some beginning of the game at point 0 when the game is starting and there is no guarantee that at the start of the game itself A star will be played. So, if there is no guarantee that at the beginning A star will be played, uh, it may start with any A in any action profile and uh, from that arbitrary A how do we get into A star? That question has not been resolved, resolved so far. The, the advantage of this strict dominance or even weak dominance is that to get into this strict the action profiles which we have got by iterated elimination of strictly dominated actions, uh, we did not need uh, we did not need the repeated play of this particular action profiles to say ok this is going to be played. Uh, at the beginning of the game at point 0 itself players can figure out that they have to play that action profile. Uh, so, to give you a simple example take the case of prisoner's dilemma.
So, here we can see that player uh, 1 has this as the strictly dominating action and this is for player 2 the action which is strictly dominating the other action, there are only 2 actions. Now, this is therefore, this C and C this action profile is going to be played in the beginning of the game itself. They do not need this CC to be played over and over again to figure out that uh, at a particular play of the game the other player is going to play C therefore, I should play C. Uh, so, here at the beginning of the game itself I can uh, apply my rationality and I can play C and other player also can apply his rationality and right at the point 0 itself they will be playing C and that will continue. Uh, this was the case where there was no iterated elimination, but in case of iterated elimination also the same logic applies. In the beginning of the game, play of the game itself right at the point 0 uh, by applying rationality and by applying the fact that the other players are rational, uh, players can figure out what are the action profiles that are going to be played. Uh, so, therefore, <coughs> This idea of stick dominance and iterated elimination of stick dominance or weakly dominated actions are helpful in the sense that we did not need uh, a logic how come as to how come this particular action profile uh, was played because this is going to be played even if there is no history. But whereas in case of Nash equilibrium we need this A star to be played for some period of time to justify that it is going to be played in future also. So, this is one advantage <coughs> and related to this idea of strict dominance and weak dominance, there is another idea of rationalizability. We shall call it rationalizable actions, they are also called sometimes as rationalizable rationalizable strategy, uh, let us call strategies. Okay. So, what is the uh, concept here? The idea is that uh, an action for player i suppose a i is rationalizable for that player if that action uh, can be played by player i given some beliefs, given some belief of player i regarding other player's action. So, if player 1 has some belief, let us call it uh, mu i, which justifies the play of a i uh, in the sense that if he has some belief regarding other player's action, a i is the best action that he can take. Uh, then a i will be called the rationalizable action for player i. Now, this logic does not stop here. Remember when i is saying that I have some belief regarding other players action and that is why I am playing a i, this other players actions have also to be justified. So, other players actions which are imputed in this uh, mu i they also have to be justified according to some belief uh, of these other players. So, we go on and in an infinite regress, a, a i is being played because of some belief regarding other players actions and why these other players are taking these actions because they also have some belief regarding other players actions of them and blah 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 we, we go on in an infinite uh, regress like that. And all these actions in this infinite sequence will be called rationalizable actions. Uh, this was this may seem a little vague, so let me start with an example uh, how these rationalizable actions are uh, found out in terms of real games. So, every player, 2 players are there, each of the players has uh, 4 actions,
Now what I claim is the following, what I claim is that in this game uh, A4 and B4 are not rationalizable actions whereas A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3 are rationalizable. Uh, how, how am I saying this? Uh, let us look at B4. Why I am saying that B4 is not rationalizable? Uh, the point about B4 is that no matter what is the action taken by player 1, B4 is never going to be played. If player 1 takes A1, then B1 is the best action, right? B4 is not being played. If A player 1 is playing A2, best action for player 2 is play B2. If player 1 is playing A3, the best action for player 2 is B3. If player 1 is playing A4, then the best action, there are two best, best actions, either B1 or B3. So, B4 is never going to be played by player 2. So, player 2 can never justify uh, under whatever beliefs that he might have. Uh, why he should play B4 at all, at any circumstances. Uh, since B4 is not being played in any of these individual cases, B4 is not going to be played even if player 1 mixes his strategies, mixes his actions. Uh, so therefore, B4 cannot be justified, it, is, it cannot be rationalized under any circumstances by player 2, therefore B4 is not rationalizable. Why A4 is not rationalizable is that this is dependent on the fact that B4 is not rationalizable. A4 by player 1 can be played, it is not that A4 cannot be played. A4 can be played if player 2 plays B4. You see if B4 is played, A4 is the best response for player 1. However, there is no rationality for B4 to be played. Uh, we have just said that B4 cannot be played under any circumstances. Therefore, the rational, the, the justification of A4 also goes because justification of A4 dependent on the justification of B4 and there is no justification of B4. Therefore, A4 is also not rationalizable, right. And what is the proof that the other actions are rationalizable? Uh, we can start with B3 for example. Is B3 rationalizable? Well, uh, player th 2 is going to play B3 if player 1 plays A3 because if player 1 plays A3, uh, the best response for player 2 is to play B3. He is getting 7 here which is the highest, highest of 0, 5, 7 and 1. And what is the justification that player 1 is going to play A3? So, let me draw, write the sequences here. B3 is being played because player 2 believes that player 1 is going to play A3. Why is A3 being played or what is the justification for player 2 to believe that player 1 is going to uh, play A3? Well, player 1 can play A3 if player 1 believes player 2 is going to play B1, right. If B1 play is played, uh, then best response for player 1 is to play A3. And what is the justification for player 2 to play B1? Uh, B1 is, is going to be played beca because player 1 is going to play A1, right. If player 1 plays A1, B1 is the best response. And why is A1 being played? 
A1 is being played because player 2 is play, suppose is believed to be playing B3, then A1 is played. So, you see we are back to B3 here. So, this way it will go on like this, we have an infinite regress that I talked to you about and each action is being justified on a belief which is dependent on the previous action in the sequence. Uh, so, that is why uh, these actions B3, not only B3, here from we can see that B3, A3, B1, A1, all these four actions are justified, they are, they are rationalizable. And similarly, we can show that A2 and B2 are also rationalizable. So, this is the definition of rationalizable and you can see that rationalizability uh, the actions which are rationalizable, uh, it is related to the idea of best responses. And therefore, we have a result which is the following. In a mixed strategy game, the mixed strategies which survives, survive the iterated elimination of strategies which are never a best response are known as rationalizable strategies. An example is uh, this game itself, here uh, B4 was never a best response, so we eliminated this and consequent to the elimination of B4, we can eliminate A4 also because now A4 is never a best response to any of the actions by player 2. So, A4 and B4 are eliminated and we can see that none of these other actions A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3 can be eliminated. So, they are never, uh, they are never actions which are not best responses. Therefore, they, these A1, A2, A3 and B1, B2, B3 are called rationalizable uh, actions or strategies. Remember the any action, any strategy can also be an action uh, because in that strategy the any particular action is being played with probability 1. So, this is some uh, uh, discussion about rationalizable actions and rationalizable strategies, uh, but uh, and what is the upshot of this that by applying these ideas that iterated elimination of uh, dominated actions or uh, rationalizable actions, uh, the idea of rationalizable action or strategies, we can pinpoint some action profiles which can be played uh, without any history. Because in Nash equilibrium, we required a history for to justify that a particular action profile is being played, and that is why it is called a steady state. But in case of rationalizability or uh, strictly dominated elimination of strictly dominated actions, we did not need uh, any previous play of the game. We just apply the idea of rationality and the fact that rationality is a common knowledge and we try to find out uh, what are the action profiles which are left. But uh, at the same time, we also must keep in mind that this is not giving us a tremendous amount of predictive power because we are left with so many action profiles, 9 of them. Uh, and uh, all of them obviously are not Nash equilibria. Nash equilibria 
will pinpoint us to a very few of the action profiles. For example, to take a simple example, take the case of uh, matching pennies. This was the game and in this game by rationalizability, by dominance, we cannot eliminate any of the actions. So, H T by player 1 and H T by player 2, both these actions uh, for each of these players uh, remain there. And so, it means that uh, in terms of your strategies all these four action profiles remain, uh, we cannot eliminate any of them. Whereas, if I apply Nash equilibrium, the idea of Nash equilibrium, I have a unique solution uh, which is half up a mixed strategy uh, equilibrium. So, Nash equilibrium uh, has basically uh, it has pointed, it has pinpointed to certain action profile or action profiles, whereas the this idea of rationalizability and uh, strict dominance, they do not pinpoint at a very small set, but they take into account a very large set and in that large set may be Nash equilibrium, uh, the set of Nash equilibria is a subset, is a small subset. So, predictive as far as predictive power goes, as far as pinpointing a particular set of actions goes, a Nash equilibrium is better. Uh, it is it is basically uh, condensing the uh, the solutions to a smaller set. So, therefore, uh, the idea of Nash equilibrium is powerful and it cannot be thrown away. So, one has to figure out how uh, this any game for example, converges to a Nash equilibrium profile. And uh, one way to do that how a game converges to a Nash equilibrium profile which is then getting repeated because of steady state properties uh, is that people tend to form beliefs because they have seen the previous play of the game. So, beliefs are formed and this formation of belief in a beliefs in a sequential manner leads us to the Nash equilibrium. So, there are two uh, hypotheses how the beliefs are formed and we go to a Nash equilibrium one can be discussed which is called the best response dynamics. And the second is known as fictitious play. So, let us start with this first one best response dynamics. Uh, in each of these two that is fictitious play and best response dynamics, a player start with an arbitrary belief. regarding other players actions. And when after they have started with an arbitrary belief regarding other players action, after the game has been played, then they observe the other players action. And observing the other player's action, they believe that this action is going to be repeated by this player in the next stage also, in the next play of the game also. And this happens for each of the players and this way this game goes on. Uh, so, suppose player 1 and there is player 2, suppose there are 2 uh, players only. And player 1 suppose starts with the belief that player 2 is going to take action B1. And player 1 believes, player 2 believes that player 1 is going to take any action A1. These are arbitrary. And believing this, they take the action. Suppose this is the best response function of player 1, this. And believing this, he takes the action, this. 
So this is what happens in period 1. After the game has been played, player 1 now observes that uh, B1, the belief that he thought player 1, uh, belief that he thought uh, of uh, action of player 2 uh, might be different from A2 B, A2, uh, sorry, B2 A1. And uh, barring the case of coincidence, B1, small b1 will be different from B2 A1. And therefore, in period 2, player 1 now starts with the belief that player, player 1 starts with the belief that player 2 is going to play this thing. So, this is his now changed belief and accordingly he takes the action this and uh, similarly player 2 will now have the belief that player 1 will take this action right and therefore he should take this action. All right, and this way the game progresses. Now it may seem, seem a little naive that the players are just taking the other player's action in the previous play of the game as given and thinking that that action is going to be repeated. Uh, that is a simple, very naive kind of belief formation. But nevertheless, uh, in many games, uh, this in fact converges us to the Nash equilibrium. Uh, one game in which it leads to a convergence to the Nash equilibrium is the Kuno duopoly case, duopoly game. And I have one question regarding this in fact. Find the sequence of pairs of outputs chosen by the firms in Kuno duopoly game under standard assumptions if both firms initially choose 0. So, here both the firms are uh, choosing the actions 0, 0 and the game is starting and uh, we have to find out what are the, what is the sequence of actions uh, by taken by both these players and does it uh, converge to the Nash equilibrium. That is what we want to see. Now, in Kuno duopoly game, if you remember the best response, if I want to write it for player 1, it was given by this was the best response function. Now, in this case what I need to do is that player 1 when he is deciding his output, he is looking at the output of player 2 in the previous period and believing that to be the output in the next period also. So, there is a time involved here. So, I can write it as t minus 1 and this as t. So, he looks at the output uh, produced by player 2 in the previous period which is q to t minus 1 believing that to be repeated in this period and therefore, uh, q t minus 1, q 2 t minus 1 is equal to q 2 t and therefore, he is taking the best response according to that and this I know as the best response function and that is. Uh, one more thing that is need that is needed to be uh, remembered is that they are starting with this initial output level of 0. And remember the best response of these two players are symmetric in the sense that player 2 also uh, has the same kind of best response function, I need not write that. You just have to replace 1 by 2 and 2 by 1. Now, if the best response function are symmetric, if they are starting from the same uh, output levels, then it means that in each period this will happen in each period their output levels will be same. Right? Now, therefore, I can write this as the following.
So, this becomes my function which is a difference function of first order. If I solve this function, then I can find out, I can chart out what is the trajectory that uh, q1 t takes and that will be the same trajectory of uh, q2 t. So, how to solve this? There are two parts in a difference equation, in the solution of the difference equation. One is the particular in integral and the other is complementary function. In particular integral, the value remains constant, the solution. The this is the equilibrium, intertemporal equilibrium value. So, let us suppose this value is k. So, if I substitute this here, okay. So, which means k is equal to alpha minus c divided by 3, this is number 1. The second is complementary function and uh, let us write it as any arbitrary function A capital A multiplied by small b to the power t where A and b are parameters. And if we substitute this uh, in this function what do we get? Here I do not have to include the constant part. What I get is the following A b t is equal to minus half a b t minus 1 right because here the uh, the subscripted t minus 1 here it is t so from here what do i get is uh, b is equal to minus half because I can divide both sides by a b t to the power a b to the power t minus 1. So, therefore, c f is equal to q i t is equal to minus half to the power t. So, the complete solution is the following it is equal to particular integral which is alpha minus c divided by 3 plus the complementary function t and we have the information that at t is equal to 0 q 1 t is equal to 0 right they start they are starting with a 0 0 output level. So, uh, 0 is equal to alpha minus c divided by 3 plus 1 because if I put t is equal to 0 this becomes 1. So, which means a is equal to minus of alpha minus c divided by 3. So, q 1 t will be equal to this. Now, what is important is that as t goes to infinity, this part goes to uh, 0. Uh, as this part goes to 0, which means this part also goes to 0. So, as t goes to infinity minus half to the power t goes to 0 and which means that q 1 t tends to alpha minus c divided by 3. So, we basically converse to the Nash equilibrium because if you remember alpha minus c divided by 3 was the Nash equilibrium. The same logic applies for q 2 t also because as we have just figured out that since they are starting from the same uh, output level 0 0 and uh, the, the, the best response functions are symmetric therefore, the, 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 the dynamics of these two outputs q 1 t and q 2 t will be same. So, q 2 t also will converge to alpha minus c divided by 3. 
So in this case, this naive kind of belief that a, uh, the, the, my rival's action in the previous period is going to be repeated by him in the next period, this kind of belief is, is uh, helpful in this case at least, in this case of Kuno equilibrium. Uh, but in uh, also one thing we have not uh, said is that in the which was there in the question that what are the sequence of actions, what are the actions to be produced, what are the outputs to be produced by these two players, by the, these two firms. So at t is equal to 0 I know uh, the output level is 0, so that is there. Uh, if t is equal to 1, I can put t is equal to 1 here and I can find out what is the value of our output for player 1 in the first period. I can put t is equal to 2 and I can find out the uh, value of output uh, for period 2, etc., etc. So, the sequence can be derived from this equation itself. But in uh, many games, this is not true. In many games, this kind of naive beliefs will not lead us to an equilibrium. Uh, for example, in the Nash, to the Nash equilibrium. For example, take the case of battle of sexes. In this game, there are two players. And I know these are the PO strategy Nash equilibrium. Now, if I start with an arbitrary belief that player 1 believes that player 2 will play B and player 2 believes that player 1 will play O, then do we get to a Nash equilibrium? If uh, B is the belief of player 1, he will play B. And if O is the player of uh, player 2, he will play O and we basically reach here. In the next period, what player 1 will do, he will play O and player 2 will play B and we shall reach here. And again, this is going to be repeated. So, we are basically uh, fluctuating between 0, 0 and 0, 0 that is O, B and B, O. None of them are Nash equilibrium. So, this naive belief may not be helpful in some cases and therefore, we need this second, we need the second concept called fictitious play. Here the beliefs are the following, suppose I have seen my rival player 2 in the 10 play of the game, he has taken A1 5 times. He has played A2 4 times, he has played A3 uh, 1 time and A4 0 times. So, in the 11th play of the game, I shall believe that he will play A1 with probability this, A2 with probability uh, this, A3 with this probability and A4 with this probability. So, I believe that uh, the, the frequency in which he has played the actions will be proportional to the probabilities he will attach to each of the actions when he plays the next play of the game. So, and I, I, I take into account the fact that he can play mixed strategy. Uh, is it helpful? Is this kind of a little more sophisticated belief structure uh, leads us to the Nash equilibrium? Well, the result is the following that if I have a 2 by 2 structure that is there are 2 actions and 2 players and uh, if the interests are directly opposed, which means that if I gain my rival loses, then this kind of belief structure leads us to the Nash equilibrium. So, uh, take the case of matching pennies. In matching pennies, in fact, infinite play of this kind of uh, the infinite play of the game with this kind of belief structure uh, leads us to the Nash equilibrium no matter where we start from. That is no matter what arbitrary belief we start from. So, these are uh, some, some of the attempts that have been made to justify how from point 0, time 0, we 
converge to Nash equilibrium and there are lots of uh, works to be done still to be done in this field. So, this is more or less the module 4 th which module was about mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. What we shall do in the next lecture from the le lecture we shall take up another important topic of uh, game theory which is sequential games uh, and we shall see what are the various facets of that game. Thank you so much. First question, define rationalizable strategies. So, let us look at this definition carefully. In a mixed strategy game, the mixed strategies which survive iterative elimination of strategies which are never best response are known as rationalizable strategies. Uh, so, we can uh, give some examples the game the strategies which uh, are not best responses they will be eliminated and the rest uh, will be considered as the rationalizable strategies. So, very simply if we remember the prisoner's dilemma game, so this was uh, the prisoner's dilemma game. Uh, here we see that for one for one the action the action n c is never a best response so this is eliminated similarly for two again n c is never a best response. So, one is left with c c is the rationalizable strategies. Here since it was a two action by two action game, so the game was simple, but one can of course, think of more complicated games where mixed strategies are uh, eliminated because those mixed strategies are never a best response. Explain the how the beliefs are formed and updated in best response dynamics. Uh, in the Kuno model, if firms act according to best response dynamics, find the output of firm 1 as a function of its previous output level. So, in best response dynamics what happens is that players believe that others actions in the last period will be repeated.
in the next period and accordingly they play according to their best response function. So, whatever whenever they see someone uh, some other player is playing some action suppose a 1 bar uh, then player 2 thinks that in the next period also player 1 will play a 1 bar and then she uses her best response function and suppose this is equal to a 2 bar and so she plays a 2 bar. So, this is how best response dynamics of, uh, works. Uh, in Kuno equilibrium model, uh, if the firms act according to the best response dynamics, find the output of firm 1 as a function of its previous output level. So, uh, in Kuno model, what do we know? We know the following this is the best response function. Okay. Now, remember here we are talking about periods different periods. So, one has to incorporate the time dimension here. So, let us call this uh, q t 1 that is the output of firm 1 in period t. Now, she will uh, decide her output according to the output of firm 2, but this output of firm 2 we, uh, the output that firm 2 will decide is not known by firm 1 from beforehand and this is simply therefore, is going to be what was firm 2's output in the previous period. So, that is what the best response dynamics tells us and since the game is symmetric q t 1 is equal to q t 2. So, I simplify this a little bit more. This. So, that is how uh, the output of firm 1 depends on uh, its own output in the previous period. Thank you.